When I first started using React, I really didn't understand this concept very well. And after working in React for a few years, I'm coming to find that this, this isn't a very well kind of understood concept, although it is pretty straightforward. So I think, you know, it's definitely not like you need to be a certain amount of smart. That sentence makes zero sense. So clearly you don't need to be that smart to understand this. I just think it's something that maybe you kind of forget about as you start working with React day to day, or you don't really understand right when you're getting into React, which is totally understandable as well. So what we're going to cover here today is rendering, what it is, what triggers a render, how does React even like render a component? How does it change with re-renders? And then what does it actually mean to commit the render to the DOM? And then we're also going to show an example here. So first off, what is rendering? Well, rendering is basically when React calls your component and decides what to display on the screen. So in React, hopefully you've seen my videos on components. So you understand that a component is just a JavaScript function that's going to return some JSX, which gets turned into your HTML elements and is what is displayed on the screen here. So if we go look at my code here, you can see that this page is a JavaScript function that returns this JSX that gets turned into the HTML that the user eventually sees on the screen. So when React renders something, it's going to call this function here and it is going to decide what it needs to render on the screen. So that is what rendering is in React. Now, what triggers a render? Well, initially, React is going to render the root component of your application and it's just going to render everything. So one trigger for a render is just the initial rendering of your web page. So the user goes to yourwebpage.com and your initial web page gets mounted. That is a trigger for a render. And React will call that root component and decide what it needs to render to the page. But another thing that triggers a render is that the component or one of its ancestor state has been updated with set state. If the component itself is managing some state and then you call set state within that component, React is going to render that component. However, if a component is a child to a parent component that also calls set state, the child component is going to re-render. So in this example down here of an input, when I start typing into this input, I am calling set state on this input to set a new state of this little component right here. So every time I press a new character here, I'm re-rendering this component with a new piece of state because I'm triggering this re-render with the set state function. So let's look at the code here. So if I come down, you can see I'm rendering this input component, which is managing this input value and set input value. So every time an on change occurs in this input, I call handle input change and I use this state setter from use state. I use this state setter to set a new input value, which is going to trigger a re-render of this input component. Now you're also seeing use client up at the top here. That's just to make this pure React and not Next.js, but I'm technically in a Next.js environment right now, but you can ignore that up there. Let's say that this input component rendered another child. So some child component. And we rendered that out right here. Well, every time an on change occurs here and I set a new input value, React is going to re-render all this code right here, which is going to include this child component. And then we're going to go re-render this child component. And if this child component has children components of its own, React is going to call and re-render those components and decide what UI it needs to render. And if those components have children, React is going to call them. So it's this recursive process where if a component sets its state, that component is going to re-render and all of its children component are going to re-render and all the children of those children are going to re-render and so on and so forth, which I think is an important concept to really understand, especially once an application gets a little more complex and you have this large component tree that you're managing. I'm going to get rid of this because that's not an actual component. So the initial render of the page triggers a re-render. And then if the component or one of its ancestor state has been updated with set state, that also triggers a re-render. 
Now, how does React go about rendering a component? Well, as I kind of already mentioned, on the initial render, React calls the rootmost component and renders your entire component tree. So the user goes to yourapp.com and the browser is like, hey, we need to render this page. That is where React is going to go to your root component on that initial render and render out your entire component tree as well as all of the HTML elements for your tree. However, on subsequent renders, React will call the function component whose state triggered the render. Then all of their children and the children of those children components will get called. So what I mean by that is if we come back here and we go to our homepage, on the initial loading of this page, React is going to call this what is going to be our root page right here, our root component, and it's going to render everything. It's also going to come to this input component and it's going to render that in input component and then all other components of the tree. However, for subsequent renders, React is only going to look for components that have triggered that render through that state call. So when I update state here in this input component, React is going to be like, hey, this input component is the component that triggered this set state call. So since this input component triggered it, React doesn't need to recall this rendering concepts. It can assume that everything that is above or apparent to this input component can just remain the same, but it will re-render this input component as well as all children and the children of those children of that in input component. But what does it mean when we get to committing? Well, that's involved in the re-rendering process. So as I've mentioned earlier, for the initial render, React uses the append child DOM API to put all DOM nodes it has created onto the screen. For re-renders though, React will only make changes to the DOM if there are differences between renders. Fewer commits lead to better performance. So effectively here, on the initial render of your web page, React will render as well as create the DOM nodes and commit all those to your page. But on subsequent re-renders, React will re-render that component, but it will check, okay, are there differences between what this component is now versus previously? If there are no differences, React doesn't commit anything new to the DOM. And it's not going to commit the elements of that component to the DOM if there are no changes before. And not needing to commit this stuff to the DOM is going to lead to less DOM manipulation, which is going to help improve performance. It's one of the, the benefits of React. So as, as I was saying earlier, when I only change this input component down here, React doesn't need to re-render everything else on this page. It only needs to re-render what has changed within this input component. And the only thing that has changed here is going to be the value within this input. So like right here, as well as right here. And if this input component had children, well, React would re-render those children. But if those children didn't have any actual changes, React's not going to recommit those children to the DOM. It's just going to leave them the same. And it's only going to commit new stuff to the DOM when there is an actual change, which I think is an important distinction. And I think that when a lot of people think of rendering, they think of like committing stuff to the DOM. When actually it's just React calling your component and deciding what to commit to the DOM. And if nothing needs to be committed, it's not actually going to commit anything to the DOM. All right, so let, let's recap here. So first off, what is rendering? It's basically when React calls your component and decides what to display on the screen. What triggers a render? Well, the initial render of your page, if you go to yourapp.com, React needs to render your entire component tree for that initial render, and it commits all that to the DOM. However, another trigger for a render is when a component or one of its ancestors, one of its parent components, has updated with set state, the state setter from use state. And you could also update state with a reducer as well. But that will also trigger a re-render of that component itself that set the state, as well as all the children of that component and those children's children. Now React renders a component where on initial render, like I said, it will render that root component or call that root component and then commit everything from your DOM tree to the actual DOM. But on subsequent renders, React will call the function whose component triggered that state update 
and it will also call all the components that are children to the component that triggered that state update, including those children's children, the children of those children, and all the way down recursively. But then for committing changes to the DOM, React will, on that initial render, append everything to the DOM like I just said. But for re-renders, React will, will call that function and it will see, okay, what, what do I need to change? What's the difference between this render and previous renders? And if there are no differences, React is not going to try to commit any changes to the DOM and write those changes to the DOM. And by doing that, it leads to better performance because less DOM manipulation is going to improve your performance. But if there are changes, React will then commit those changes to the DOM. So hopefully this video clears some stuff up regarding rendering and committing in React. I know that this is a concept that can be a little bit confusing, but I think that once you kind of break it down, it, it really does make a lot of sense. So let me know if you have any questions below, and I appreciate you watching.